Alright guys, I'm back with a new first day survival guide. Uh, this one is for Alpha 16 um, on the PC, obviously. Um, if you've watched my Alpha 15 survival guide, first day survival guide, uh, this is not going to be a lot different than that. There, most of the things uh, that I did in the first day are still going to be the same. Uh, there are a couple of pretty... Uh, reasonably sized changes to what I'm going to do, but a lot of that's going to come after the first day. Um, the The Alpha 15 guide still kind of is pretty pertinent to this, um, but I'm going to go ahead and make a new one because I know a lot of people are going to be searching for uh, Alpha 16 stuff, um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the stuff that I've maybe changed. Uh, if you're new to my guide, if you haven't seen my other guide, um, first my apologies, my PC is just a little old and I do have to turn the graphics down a bit when I'm recording, uh, so maybe the game doesn't look quite as nice in this video as it would on your PC. Um, and also, if you are on console, you may want to check out the Alpha 15 video because that one is closer to the build that consoles are currently running uh, than Alpha 16 is. Um, this guide is not meant to be a like brand new to the game beginner's guide. Uh, I'm not going to go over how to open the different menus or how to do crafting or anything like that. I'm going to assume that you either have a little experience in the game, like you know how to get into the crafting, you know how to do the make a stone axe, or that there's plenty of other videos out there that already kind of cover that stuff. So this is more about what, how I spend my first day, how I survive my first day. Um, every time a new alpha comes out and they put the game on sale, a lot of new players get into the game and the first day can be very, very difficult until you know, until you've learned the game. Once you've learned the game, first day is much, much easier. Um, so this is just kind of me trying to make that transition a little easier. So I've started a new seed here. I skipped uh, the generation of the the world um, because it does take quite a long time. And the settings are all on their default settings. Uh, the developers in Alpha 16 have changed the default day length to 18 hours, which is the only change that I had been making in Alpha 15. And so now I can just leave everything on the default, uh, basically play with the default settings. Um, so I've just spawned in. I haven't done anything. All I've done is accept the quest that pops up on the screen and hit escape. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. So. The starting quests, um, still a good idea to go ahead and do them. They've changed the order of things just a little bit. Um, that, so now you, they've got you making a bedroll first, which I think is actually a really good idea. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and collect my plant fibers, make my bedroll. Now that's a good idea because if, if I would happen to run into a wolf or a vulture or something aggressive or fall off a cliff or something like that here in the first couple minutes of the game, um, the bedroll would allow me to spawn right back here by my bag so that I could retrieve my, you can see the items in my inventory here, my bottle of water, my can of chili, my torch, and my bandage, and my land claim block. Um, which would be really nice to, to be able to get that stuff back. There are plenty of reports right now on the forums about uh, wolves not respecting the safety timer here. So at, at the beginning of the game, when we first load into the game, we should have until about 1 p.m. if we stay in this area right here without any zombies spawning in. Um, a lot of people are reporting that that may not be the case for wolves, that wolves may be able to spawn in. Uh, right off the bat and that they were eaten by wolves within the first couple of minutes of the game being loaded. Uh, I have not experienced that. I've started about five games or so um, and so far have not seen a wolf until I wandered away from my starting area. Uh, but enough people are saying that that I, I believe them. Um, so definitely something to do is to look around right off the bat, see if there's any wolves. If there is, crouch down, try to get away. You absolutely cannot tangle with a wolf while you're brand new spawned in and don't even have any uh, weapons. Um, and I honestly don't think I would want to tangle with a wolf even after I have my first bow and arrow. Unless I'm really, I'm, I'm getting the jump on him, I'm prepared and I'm, I'm ready to run. I'm at full stamina and I've got plenty of arrows. Uh, looks like I need some stone to make a f axe. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is just run around my starting area. Wow, that jar of honey off right off the bat is a great find. Um, oh, goggles aren't bad either. So the, the jar of honey is such a great find because if you get infected, which is pretty decent odds for me to get infected in the first couple days, all it takes is one hit from a zombie. Uh, the jar of honey, if you use it in the first during the first stage of infection, which seems to last about two days, um, it will cure that. So I do get infected pretty often, and having that jar of honey is going to save me a lot of effort in curing that infection. I got a pretty normal spawn. Like I said, I've been starting out a couple of new, new games, um, and I've gotten kind of the same kind of spawn every time where it seems like you're very very likely to to spawn not with inside of a road now I haven't spawned with inside of a road in any of my games um, but with the new distant terrain and this is one of the things that have changed is I can immediately see around me that there is a town over there uh, those are big buildings um, that would probably be a sizable town there is a cabin right up there on the cliff face. Uh, I can see some sort of POI off in the distance way over there. So I can immediately turn around and look and see, okay, I've got these buildings around me. That has really changed my first day. That's probably the biggest change in my first day is that my old first day, I'd gather up some materials and then I'd try to find a road, try to follow that road until I found some sort of POI to spend the night in, something preferably that had two stories and some solid walls. Now that is really, really simple to do. Um, it just doesn't take any effort or any work at all to find POIs. Uh, so I can spend a little more time gathering up my stuff. I'm not in quite such a hurry to head on down the road because it's probably not going to take me very long. Well, it's obviously not going to take me very long. If I had to, I could just walk to one of these POIs I can see. Um, also, I didn't ever worry too much about finding a town on my first day before, but now it's really easy to find towns. Oh, well that wasn't there before, so now there's a cabin on that island. Yeah, the game may still have a few glitches in it. Uh, but because I can find towns so easily, I really kind of make it a priority. I'd like to set up my first base right on the outskirts of a town, or even in a town. There's no harm in doing it in the town. Um, and so I kind of try to try to find a town and try to make my make my way towards that town right off the bat. Okay, I got my stone axe. So this is the best source of wood. These bushes right here. One hit with the level 25 stone axe knocks those down. Gets you four wood. Well, usually it's four wood. Eh, kind of. I guess it may change between bush. Yeah, there's four wood. Five wood. Gets you a bunch of wood, in any case. Um, and it's a lot faster than actually harvesting trees. One of the changes in Alpha 16, you no longer get any bonus for finishing out a tree. So even though I can chop down this entire tree, if you watch here how much wood I'm getting, I'm not going to get that big bonus at the end like we used to. And so there's really no reason to finish anything, to work on a larger tree or anything like that. So I just kind of smack these bushes as I go. I usually have plenty of wood for what I need. And that is another change that I'm going to make to my first day procedure here, is that um, I am not going to spend nearly as much time collecting wood as I used to, because it is such a pain. It's so slow now to collect wood. Uh, and it's just not necessary. They've lowered the amount of wood needed for everything. Um, so I only need... oh. Probably I'd like to have around 100, 150 wood, uh, and then I'm I'm fine to keep moving on. Um, so the next thing I need to make some clothes. So the this part of the quest is a little annoying in that it makes you make a plant fiber hood, and in reality I find that most zones are going to end up being too hot instead of too cold. So the hood provides you with insulation, um, makes you warmer. The hat makes you cooler. Uh, so I kind of think that that quest probably should have you making a hat instead of a hood to kind of balance out all the insulation from the other stuff, but it's not that big of a deal. This zone here is probably going to be really temperate, so 
It's not going to hurt me in the least. Now, they've changed the harvest on the rocks as well. Uh, you do get quite a little bit of other materials besides rock uh, when you're harvesting these stones. But you don't get as much rock as you used to, and you don't get the bonus amounts for breaking them down in between stages. However, rock is super duper still important. Um, you're going to need lots of rock for making bows and arrows. You need wood and feathers for those as well. Um, you're going to use rock to repair your stone tools. And you're going to need eight rocks for the campfire that's part of the quest. Um, and what we've kind of replaced wood frames with now we still want to make wood frames they're part of the beginning quest anyway and they are super useful for reaching high places um, so i still want to make a couple of wood frames but if i'm going to build or fortify anything um, in this first couple of this first week or so i'm going to actually use flagstone and flagstone is a new recipe in this alpha uh, it's like a step below cobblestone um, and it's super easy to make. All it takes is a little bit of clay, and I think it's one clay and three stone. Here, it's three cobblestones. Cobblestones take one one clay and one stone per cobblestone. So three three clay and three stone makes you a flagstone block, and that is, in my opinion, a lot easier and faster to get than the wood that you're going to need because once you make the frame, frame takes five wood, then you have to upgrade it, um, just, and it's not very strong, so I, I'm just going to use flagstone if I'm building anything or if I'm fortifying anything. Okay, so we need to make a club. So if I couldn't already see my destination from here, then I would be heading up the hill to the high spots to try to find a good vantage point to be able to look in all directions. Um, out of the five games that I've started, I've only had one game where I couldn't see where I wanted to head right off the bat. Uh, there was just, I think the only thing within sight right off the bat was campsites, and campsites don't do you much good in the first day. I mean, they're good for looting, but not, not much good for staying in. So uh, that one, I headed up to the top of a hill and immediately saw a cabin in the distance and headed to the cabin. It did take me until halfway through my second day to find a city on that one. But the other games, I was able to find a city within the first couple of minutes of the game. So, so I am going to kind of make my way over here. And one thing I'm going to do at this point is, uh, well, we're going to make some arrows. We can... We can actually make the bow first now. Uh, they changed the way that crafting works, so it used to be, I said in the last video, make all your arrows first to level up your uh, weapon smithing, and then make your bow, and your bow would be a higher level. Well, now your level of your items that you're making is all determined by how many points, skill points you've put into it. And so there's it, everything in the beginning is going to be level 25, no matter what, until you put some skill points into it. So doesn't hurt me to repair my stone axe now. We don't have to make a new one each time. Um, it's going to be level 24 after I repair it, but the difference is negligible. Uh, same thing, I can make the bow right off the bat, and then I can start making the arrows. I'm going to need quite a few arrows, but I don't want to use up all of my stone. So I'm just going to leave myself a little bit of stone in case I need it for repairs. Get myself enough plant fiber to make sure that I have enough to make another sleeping bag when I get where I'm going. And I'm starting to wander in the direction of this town. And found a road. I'm not seeing any zombies yet, so I probably haven't gotten far enough away from my spawn yet to, to see any zombies. But they should be popping in any second. I think there's a bag down there. So the next part of the quest is going to have me make some wood frames. I am going to make the wood frames. I'm not going to place the wood frames or upgrade the wood frames right off the bat. And, uh, so after I make the wood frames, and I have a couple wood frames to help me get into high places, um, that's where I stop on the beginning quest until nighttime. Um, it's just, I don't want to burn that wood to drop those wood frames somewhere and upgrade them to where I can't take them with me anymore. 
the finishing that beginning quest is useful in that it gives you a couple skill points, enough skill points to buy one of your skills. Uh, people ask, which skills should I buy? Well, I haven't played enough of the end game yet to really be able to give a good answer, but I can tell you in the beginning, the first points I put into the skills are going to be toolsmithing. The second thing that I do is going to be weaponsmithing. That's going to get me level 50 tools and level 50 bow and arrow. After that, if I have some more points, um, I'm either going to put them into bad mechanic, if it looks like I'm going to be stuck on stone axe for a while, or if I've started to find the stuff needed to make a forge, I might just go ahead and buy the Miner 69er perk right off the bat. Um, that's going to affect your pickaxe and your uh, stone uh, um, fire axe. Okay, so my stone axe needs repair. See, level 24. So I'm doing really good right off the bat here. We haven't seen any wolves. We actually haven't seen any wildlife at all. Something else that they've changed is that the pigs are gone and they've been replaced by boars. If you, boars are not aggressive, but if you attack a boar, it will attack you back. So just an FYI, if you see a boar, don't just go willy-nilly attacking it. Make sure that you're ready to deal with that. They don't go down too hard, especially if you can hit them in the head. And the, Headshots seem to be pretty easy on them. Um, I usually try to sneak up on one, start out with a headshot, and either that'll one-shot him, or he'll come running at me head first, and then I'll just put another arrow into his head. Wolves are kind of the same way. If I come across a wolf here at the very beginning, if I come across a wolf right now, I'm going to avoid him. Uh, I'm definitely not going to fight him. However, food in the beginning is a little bit scarce, and wolves end up being a kind of a decent source of meat and uh, hides so eventually maybe on day two or after I got my base set up and I've got my sleeping bag placed if I see a wolf I'm actually gonna try to kill him just so I can get the meat off of him uh, and what I'm gonna do is make sure I've got plenty of arrows make sure that my stamina bar is nearly full so that I can do plenty of running um, and I'm going to try to sneak up on him, put an arrow in his head from the sneak position, that's double damage, and then hopefully get another arrow into his head while he's coming at me, and then I'm going to start backpedaling like this. You can backpedal and sprint at the same time while I'm shooting him in the head while he's coming at me. Ideally, you want to find a nice flat, wide open spot where there's not a lot of zombies around so that when you're backpedaling, you're not backing up into things. Because if you back up into a rock or you back up into a car, uh, that may be enough. The wolves are really fast and they can close that distance on you very quick. Likewise, if you miss an arrow, um, if, if you're not stunning them with every single arrow that you're shooting, uh, they'll close the distance and kind of get you. And it only takes them a hit or two to make you bleed out and die. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get my wood frames going. And I'm just kind of wandering in the direction of this town. Still haven't seen any zombies. It's, there they are. So I got a little burnt forest here. Uh, by the way, if you do spawn into a desert, congratulations. That's probably the best and easiest area to start in. Uh, make yourself a plant fiber hat right off the bat, um, but you probably will be able to, with distant terrain, see an area outside of the desert anyway if you get overheated. But the nice thing about deserts is there's no wolves in the desert, um, and so you don't have to worry about them. Uh, there's also abundant food from the yucca in the desert, uh, which can also be turned into something to drink. So, normally in the beginning I kind of just pick up everything, but I know I don't need any glass right away, and I also probably not going to need to plant cotton. If I do need to plant cotton, I get the cotton seeds anytime, so I'm just not going to take any spot up in my inventory with those. So another thing that I'm going to change about my first day uh, video, my Alpha 15 first day video, is I said if I could get a forge going, or if I found a building with a forge, that the first thing I would build was a hammer. Uh, at that time when I made that video, the hammer was an absolutely fantastic tool. It was cheap to build, um, and it 
broke both wood and stone really quick. Uh, worked pretty decently against metal. Its only downside was that its stamina usage was a little high. And as a side effect, it also had the... Um, when you were using the hammer, you leveled up your construction tools. Which was something that you needed to do anyway. So uh, that's no longer the case. I found the hammer to be a pretty lackluster tool right off the bat now. Uh, its stamina usage is way too high when it's a low level tool at least and when your construction tool skill isn't very high uh, to make it viable. So I've started skipping the hammer now. Um, I just stick with the stone axe for a construction tool uh, at the very beginning. I'm talking of course about the first couple of days. And the first thing now that I'm going to make is a pickaxe usually. Um, go, go ahead and speed up. Like I said, stone is super important. You can kind of live without the wood. You don't need a ton of wood. You're still going to need a ton of stone. So I make a pickaxe and get the stone going. Oh. There we go. And the next thing I do after that is going to be the fire axe. If I get so lucky as to find a hunting knife book, I'm going to make a hunting knife right off the bat. Those are super fantastic for harvesting animals, getting more meat and more skin. Uh, we did see a deer back there. I've chosen not to go after the deer, even though, like I said, animals are super rare and I usually wouldn't want to leave one um, out there without going after it and trying to harvest the meat. Smell is broken right now, uh, and it sounds like, according to the developers, they're not going to fix smell until Alpha 17. Uh, so right now, you can carry raw meat or cooked meat or any kind of anything that makes a smell. You can carry it and doesn't actually make a smell and doesn't attract zombies. So there's no harm in hunting the animals when you see them, skinning them, getting the meat, and uh, not going to attract any zombies. So. so we're finding quite a little bit of stuff. Along the way, and I'm still picking up any stones that I see. So this town, one thing I'm going to do real quick, and I'm going to check my position on the map. Okay, so I'm uh, northeast, and I'm heading east, basically. So this is not the center city. Um, so I found a, a pretty fantastic town in one of my other spawns in the, in the center. And it doesn't seem like the center cities um, need to be need to be uh, in the wasteland anymore. That, that one was uh, just grassland or uh, forest. So center city might not be something uh, that's super easy for a, a first time player, but it seems like it's probably not something that we have to avoid for the first couple of weeks like we used to in older alphas. Okay. So, coming up on here, one thing that stays the same is from my last video is that I still try to find shelter by 1800. They've introduced a sleeper system. So, the buildings now have sleeper zombies in them that will wake up when you enter or get too close to them. So it takes a little bit of time to clear a building and get it ready to be able to stay there for the night. So I'm still going to go with 1800 for the most part. But I, if I find a building earlier than that, I'm going to get in there. I'm going to clear it out and get it ready to go. And like usual, I'm going to be looking for a two-story building at least. The zombies don't deal really well with you being above or below them. So if you can get up onto the second story of a building and block or knock out the stairs, you're basically guaranteed to be safe. Well, guaranteed to be safe from one or two random random zombies that might pick up, like sense you overnight. That uh, might take a little more work if you're going to be completely safe from a horde, and definitely a little more work if you're going to be safe from a feral horde. So 
Yeah, a house, house. That fence right there. That is likely a bunker underneath that shed, but I don't really want to deal with getting through the metal door into a bunker. Bunkers are great for making a base, but on the first day it's just more work than it's worth. I don't need, need anything that secure. So as a result of the sleeper system, there aren't as many zombies in town now. I've had one or two occasions where I found wolves wandering around town. Ooh, I'll go ahead and replace my club. So I do keep an eye open for the wolves. But generally speaking, it's a pretty sparse little sprinkling of zombies wandering around the towns on the outside now. They're all inside the buildings. Got a lot of new buildings in this alpha too. I'm seeing a lot of stuff um, even right now. I don't think I've ever seen this particular POI. Uh, POI, by the way, is point of interest. Um, I don't think I've ever seen this particular building before. So that might be new or else something I've just never enc encountered. Lots of houses. I'm walking by a lot of great loot here. Um, I should probably be looting these cars. And I'll stop and get this one at least. But, but yeah. First things first, I just kind of want to figure out where I'm going to spend the night. So this building right here would be perfectly fine for a first base. There's one down there. That would be a good one as well. These skyscrapers are brand new, and I have no idea what's in them yet. I haven't tackled one. Um, the developers said that they kind of envisioned them as a mini dungeon, as it were. Something that might take you a couple of days to clear out. Oh, that fire department POI is new to me. There's a rabbit. Haven't seen very many rabbits either. They used to be a dime a dozen rabbits and chickens, um, but they've really turned down the number of number of animals that spawn in now. Looks like a gas station. And we got vulture. Crane's changing, we're into some sort of new biome here. Some cactus, but there's still a lot of grass, so I can't tell for sure if this is supposed to be desert. Feels like desert. Okay, so I don't know, there's a lot of factories over there, that's awesome. Um, eventually I'll get around to looting those. Um, I'm not sure oh, these shoes look pretty good yeah they are pretty good I'm going to keep that sweatshirt in case this, I end up in the cold area I like to have some sort of coat in my inventory so I've got this three-story building right here. That one would probably be a good one to set up shop. Uh, it's nice and centrally located. I can spend the entire first week just looting this town. Two-story here would be just fine as well. Uh, I don't like to set up on top on rooftops anymore just because of the vultures have a tendency to show up at inopportune times. They're not a real big danger. They go down pretty easy. They don't do a ton of damage either, but they're just obnoxious. Uh, so I like to set up somewhere where I can kind of get inside and with that in mind this gas station um, In previous alphas, I would have probably set up shop on top of the gas station That's a great spot to spend your seven days because uh, the awning around the side means that you can't get any crawlers coming up or spider zombies crawling up the sides uh, It's got a big wide open area inside where you can just knock out the garage doors and then fill that area with spikes and Shoot down on the zombies as they come in uh, they'll walk through the spikes and you can just kind of murder them. 
but I don't want to set up my base there because I really don't want to be exposed to the elements out in the sun if this ends up being a really hot area. And I really don't want that guy right there to be pestering me while I'm trying to cook or uh, do use the forge. So with that in mind, yucca, I like yucca, a few of those. I'm going to loot this car. Uh, I like to loot everything right around the area where I'm going to stay because, oop, and that's a great find. Um, what will happen is a random zombie will come, come over here and, and notice me, or maybe he doesn't even notice me, but he'll start beating on that car, and that will make the car explode. Uh, and then whatever was in that car, uh, I lose. Uh, so same thing with everything inside. They... Occasionally, they'll just uh, the zombies will just show up and start beating on the cupboards and breaking the cupboards, and then it's like, well, I wish I really would have taken the loot out of those cupboards. So, I still don't put much stock in the melee combat in the beginning of the game. Um, I haven't tested it in the end of the game yet. I know machetes are going to be a little more common in this alpha and that they do seem to be a fairly good melee weapon. Uh, but the the game is still just... I, I still experience frame drops. It's, it's not optimized basically at all. Um, it's just too easy for you to swing, and it looks like you've hit, hit the zombie, but the game doesn't register the hit, and the zombie hits you back. Um, so I, I still just... I don't like to put myself in that situation. Whoop. Okay, so these are the sleeper zombies. Came in the, that window just a little, a little loud, but they didn't wake up. So I'm gonna try to murder them all without waking them, and then I'm gonna loot the place. This one's gonna be hard to get an angle on. And they have a tendency to wander off aimlessly once you wake them. Just also... Yes. Pretty annoying. I think somebody upstairs is probably awake. I can hear them growling. So one of the other bad things... Well, if it's a bad thing really but one of the things about the sleeper zombie system is that if you don't clear out all of the sleeper zombies here they will respawn once you leave this area uh, faster than they would if you had killed them all so I like to make sure that I've been pretty thorough Clean out my inventory just a bit. Scrap and stuff. So chairs are great now um, as a source of wood. That's uh, always pick up any chair that you walk by and scrap it, and it'll give you some free wood without you really having to use up any tools or any time. myself from checking the and that's really why right there wow gotta check those bookshelves uh, so that's a fantastic find I haven't found a mini bike book in any of my other games oh wow the bookshelves really aren't that loaded with books in my experience in this alpha um, normally I open six or seven bookshelves before I find a book in any of them so don't take this video as the normal here but this this it's really lucky here, and 
<laughs> and the luck continues. Um, so pistols are not terribly hard to find. Uh, I have found several of those in the other games. I'll just scrap him for metal. But it's still pretty lucky to find one on your first day. Unfortunately, the level of that pistol makes it nearly useless to shoot right now until I get some points into pistols. Um, I'd probably be better off just sticking with a bow and arrow. They, the developers really like to stick these sleeper zombies in the corners. So you've got to check your corners. I can hear somebody. I'm going to come back and get these wooden chairs later. Uh, whoever I'm hearing could very well be up on the roof. The first time I loaded one of these, I got in a building just like this, uh, set up camp right here without going up onto the roof. Middle of the night, I started hearing growling, and a guy fell in through the hatch right there and started running around. Um, almost killed me. Uh, definitely gave me a heart attack. So I, I learned to always get up on the roof and check for sleeper zombies up on the roof. You know, so I'm spending a lot more time sneaking than I used to. And there's one right there. Ooh. And that vulture doesn't seem to have saw me. eat these two yucca here to get them out of my inventory. Food and water are usually not a big deal on the first day. I always tell people uh, don't don't make food and water a priority on your first day. Um, so something else that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break up this guy's corpse. Don't need rotted flesh but what I'm looking for If I break up enough of these there it is, corpses, I'm going to get a bone, and when I get that bone, I can turn that into a bone shiv. And that bone shiv is going to be useful for harvesting meat if I kill any animals. Whoa, I don't know how I didn't notice her. She's dead now. Him. That's a businessman. So uh, the corpses uh, last a lot longer. There's not really any hurry to loot them. There's also not any hurry uh, for me to harvest them. I think they actually are harvestable for a day or two. So that's why I didn't bother to loot them down in the basement or in the first level. I think that we're clear here now. There is that one room down on the first level that I didn't open the door to because it's a metal door and I didn't want to bang on it. Uh, something else I always do is I knock out the bottom ladder here, and in an emergency I will run up that ladder and the zombies won't be able to follow me. They can't get up anything that doesn't have a, that bottom rung. So I am going to go ahead and open this up, see if there's a sleeper in there. If there is a sleeper, I'll likely wake it by banging on this door, and then it'll help me open up the door. I see a sleeper. Nope, I see a trash bag. Ah. So this time around, I've got some points that I can go ahead and put into things. Remember I said I was going to do toolsmithing first, weaponsmithing second. And that means that I am actually going to scrap that and make a new one from scratch. Still going to get this door open and peek my head in there, make sure that there's nothing around the corner. Don't fight zombies with a stone axe. I cannot say that enough. The stone axe is a terrible weapon. Um, I see people doing let's plays using the stone axe as a weapon all the time, and 
it's absolutely ineffective. Um, okay, it looks like we are all clear here, so I'm going to go ahead and set myself up. on the top story here. And first off, just need to stash some stuff. Don't need any of this stuff right off the bat. Okay, just I'm going to make a little room in my inventory. I've got an hour and a half of game time before it gets dark, and what I'd like to do is um, clear out any zombies that are right outside of the building, and if I can, I'd like to get a little clay so I can make some flagstone. That could be an issue because we've gotten into the desert, and it looks like we got a bunch of clay right behind us. Clay shows up as the dark brown spots um, right here on the map. So that's the easiest way to find clay. gonna notice me eventually. So I might as well kill her and get her out of the way. So moldy bread can be used to uh, make antibiotics, so Keep your moldy bread, keep your sham sandwiches. It takes 10 sand sham sandwiches to make a moldy bread. Four moldy breads with a beaker to make a uh, make an antibiotic. Some nitrate and some murky water. Okay. time here. I'm going to go ahead and get in. Well, right now I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and oh, got to loot him first. Clear this guy out. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do some cobblestone. Twelve of those. One of these. And the cobblestone turns into the flagstone. Okay, so that's not bad right there. I'm going to upgrade my door. Now normally I'd knock out the stairs and make a wall right here that I have to climb up and get up here. 
A, I didn't have enough time, and B, uh, this set of stairs right above me makes that a little difficult. Um, there's not enough headroom to do that. I'm going to get my quest done here by using these as my... Hmm. I don't think I can actually put that there. That's all right. I'll just go stick that somewhere else. Um, so yeah, that's why I didn't didn't reinforce it that way. I can always come back later and make changes. Plus, I could have several levels levels of defense here. I can put six more doors between me and the upper level if I need to. Knock out part of the floor and make a pitfall. Whatever I need to do. Um, so one last thing I'm going to mention is that you'll hear some people saying that torches generate too much heat. Uh, that does not appear to be the case. My other seeds, I've got oh, you know, 10 or 12 torches around my base and I'm not seeing any any real increase in uh, the number of zombies that are coming by in the middle of the night or, or hordes or anything like that. So I, I definitely question, I, I think whatever torches, whatever heat uh, torches generate, and I'm talking heat like as in attracting zombies, uh, it's it's still pretty low. Now as soon as I turn on a forge or a campfire, then I start to get some hordes, so those definitely still generate quite a little bit. Um, but that's it for, for day one. Um, so here I'm going to spend my night basically upgrading my tools. As you guys remember, I just uh, put some points into my tool crafting and my uh, weapon crafting, so I'm going to upgrade my tools and my weapons, I'm going to set up a campfire, finish out this quest, uh, starting quest here, and just kind of get ready for the next day, and maybe even reinforce, spend a little bit of my resources reinforcing, blocking off this hole in the wall. Uh, it's, that hole's not really hurting me any, but it's just nice to have a full wall in between you and the elements. And I'm also going to spend a little time looting this place, because I feel pretty confident on these first two levels, or these top two levels. And I'm not going to get any zombies sneaking up behind me in the middle of the night. Um, and uh, that's it. So, um, if you guys enjoyed the video, if you found it at all useful, uh, give it a like. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't do this professionally, so I apologize for the, the low video quality and the you know, it's uh, not not exactly a professional video, so. But hopefully, you guys found something useful in it, and check out my Alpha 15 video um, if you're playing on a console and you, and you want to know what how to start out your first day on a console. Uh, it's fairly accurate to what you guys have on the consoles right now. Thanks.